In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your My dear brothers and sisters, I am very honored and absolutely delighted to be able to be with you today. We are traveling throughout the diocese to celebrate and pray the Stations of the Cross. And we are using this opportunity also to connect with many people, not only within our diocese, but far beyond in the World Wide Web for this wonderful Lenten devotion. And I want to take this opportunity as we begin today, not only to extend a word of gratitude to all of you who have gathered here to pray with us, but also to welcome and to thank all of those who are joining us by means of our diocesan multimedia platforms. St. Mary's Parish is a beautiful parish and it is a delight to be able to be here to join with you in prayer and to be absorb uh, the beauty of this very sacred worshiping space. Jesus came with his disciples to a country place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit down here while I go over yonder and pray. Then he took with him Peter and the sons of Zebedee, and he began to be saddened and exceedingly troubled. He said to them, My soul is sad even unto death. Wait here and watch with me. He went forward a little, and falling prostrate, he prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Almighty and Eternal Father, accept our prayer of thanksgiving for your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord. As we recall his sacred passion, send the Spirit of Christ into our hearts, we beg you, so that whether we pray or work, we might do all in union with Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified, The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Again, the high priest began to ask him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said to him, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. But the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as liable to death. The kings of the earth rise up, and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. I will proclaim the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me, I will give you a nation for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Let us pray. All powerful and eternal God, for proclaiming the truth, your Son Jesus Christ is condemned to death by crucifixion. Stir up your love in our hearts 
so that we might be ever faithful to all that you have told us and fear nothing more than the loss of your friendship through sin. Lord Jesus crucified. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And Pilate said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away, bearing the cross for himself. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance that would attract us to him. He was rejected and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom men turn away, and we held him in no esteem. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your son Jesus Christ still carries his cross in his persecuted brothers and sisters throughout the world. Make us feel the needs of all persons so that we might readily help them as we would help Jesus himself. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before you. If you were of the world, the world would love what is its own. Because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I have spoken to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Why are your clothes red and your garments like those of the wine presser? The wine press I have trodden alone and of my people there was no one with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them down in my wrath. Their blood spurted on my garments and I stained all my clothes. I looked about, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that there was no one to lend support. So my own arm brought about the victory. Let us pray. O oh God, to free us from sin and weakness, your Son, Jesus Christ, embraced his fearful passion and crucifixion. Strengthen us in our baptismal resolutions by which we renounce sin and Satan, so that through the passion of this life's sufferings, we might rise to a new life of joyful service, free of all selfishness. Amen. Lord Jesus, crucified.
the fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Now there were standing by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. To what can I compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your distress, who can heal you? Let us pray. O blessed Lord, at your passion a sword of sorrow pierced the loving heart of your mother, as Simeon had foretold. Grant that we who look back on her sorrows with compassion might receive the healing fruits of your sufferings. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene, helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And when they had mocked Jesus, they took the purple cloak off and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to be crucified. Then they forced a certain passerby, Simon of Cyrene, coming from the country to take up his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, a name meaning the place of the skull. With a loud voice, I cry out to the Lord. With a loud voice, I beseech the Lord. My complaint I pour out before him. Before him, I lay bare my distress. When my spirit is faint within me, you know my path. In the way along which I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I have desired to see, but there is no one who pays me heed. I have lost all means of escape. There is no one who cares for me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to see in the sufferings and shortcomings of our lives a share in your cross. Strengthen and console us in the belief that we bear all things in union with you who have taken upon yourself even our guilt. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And answering, the king will say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it for one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. 
A faithful friend is a life-saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend (coughs) himself. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we feel your love and understanding in the consolation and support we receive from one another. Give us, we beg you, the courage and dedication to sacrifice and suffer with those who are in need, the least of your people. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was our weaknesses that he carried, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken as one struck by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shears. He was silent and uttered no cry when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you shared in our weaknesses and accepted our guilt. Grant us the favor of rejoicing over our human weaknesses so that in all we do, your strength dwelling in us may be shown to all others. Lord Jesus crucified. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. There was following Jesus a great crowd of people, and among them were some women who were bewailing and lamenting him. Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Come, all you who pass by the way, look and see whether there is any suffering like my suffering, suffering with which the Lord has afflicted me on the day of his blazing wrath. At this I weep, my eyes run with tears. Far from me are all who could console me. Far away are any who might revive me. Let us pray. Beloved Jesus, with tears of pity, these women of Jerusalem responded to you, broken, bruised, and beaten on the road to Calvary. Deepen our faith, we beg you, so that we may see you in our brothers and sisters, bruised by our envy, beaten down by injustice, and broken by our greed and our indifference. Lord Jesus crucified.
the ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. I lie prostrate in the dust. Give me life according to your word. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. My soul weeps for sorrow. Strengthen me with your words. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, even then will I trust. Even then will I trust. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you permitted your son to be weakened, crushed, and profaned so that he might rise from the dead, freed from the ravages of sin. Help us to accept our weaknesses and failures as forerunners of our glorious resurrection in union with your son. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. Have The ten station, Jesus is stripped of his clothes. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. They gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then after they had crucified him, they divided his clothes, casting lots, to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. They divided my clothes among them, and upon my garments they cast lots. Happy is the man whom God chastises. Do not reject the punishment of the Almighty, for he wounds, but he binds up. He smites, but his hands give healing. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for comforters, and I found none. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, stripped of everything, you stood exposed to the jeers and contempt of the people whom you loved. Clothe us with genuine love of others, so that nothing we suffer may ever fill our hearts with hatred or bitterness. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. When they came to Golgotha, the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus and the robbers, one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my prayer, far from the words of my cry. Oh my God, I cry out by day and you answer me not. I cry out by night and there is no relief for me. All my bones are racked. My heart has become like wax, melting away within my chest. My throat is dried up like baked clay. My tongue cleaves to my jaws. 
They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Let us pray. Lord and Savior, you told us that we too must accept crucifixion if we are to accept resurrection with you. Help us to rejoice in the sufferings that come with the fulfillment of our daily duties, seeing in them the royal road of the cross to the resurrection. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified. the twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the curtain of the temple was torn in the middle. Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Then, bowing his head, he died. My people, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? Answer me. What more should I have done and did not do? I led you out of the land of Egypt, and you prepared a cross for me. I opened the Red Sea before you, and you opened my side with a lance. I gave you a royal scepter, and you have given me a crown of thorns. With great power I lifted you up, and you have hung me upon a cross. My people, what have I done to you, or in what have I offended you? Answer me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus crucified. The thirteenth station, the body of Jesus, is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. When the soldiers came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. But one of them opened his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. Joseph of Arimathea, because he was a disciple of Jesus, although a secret one for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave permission. O oh my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and I will bring you back to your land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live. You shall know then that I am the Lord. I have promised it and I will do it, says the Lord. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, you returned to the Father all that he had given you so that he might restore all to you a hundredfold in the glorious resurrection. Help us, we beg you, to give generously of ourselves in all that we do for you, so that like you, we might be made perfect in a new resurrection. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified.
the 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus and wrapping it in a clean linen cloth, he laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and departed. I will praise you, O Lord, for you lifted me up and do not let my enemies rejoice over me. O oh my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the lower world. You preserve me from among those going down into the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment. His goodwill is for a lifetime. When weeping enters in. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, on the edge of sadness when all seemed lost, you restored to us the Savior we thought defeated and conquered. Help us, we beg you so, to empty ourselves of self-concern and we, that we might see your hand in every failure and your victory in every defeat. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord Jesus crucified. Our closing, the resurrection of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. When the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had just risen, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll the stone back from the entrance of the tomb for us? For it was very large. But looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. And upon entering the tomb, they were amazed to see a young man sitting at the right side and clothed in a white robe. He said to them, Do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. I believe in what? The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we conclude today, I would like to, in a very special way, offer my gratitude to you, Monsignor, for not only your hospitality, but for sharing not only such a beautiful church building, but a wonderful and magnificent congregation with me and with the Diocese of Greensburg. A special word of thanks uh, to Jeff and to Bill, to the parish staff, to our liturgical and musical ministers, and again to all of you for taking time out today and joining us for this beautiful traditional prayer of the Stations of the Cross. Um, uh, Freeport is a very pl close place to my own personal heart. My maternal grandmother was from Freeport, 
And my mother and dad always tell many wonderful stories about Freeport when they were dating, coming down to my great-grandmother's house. She was a Barry. And uh, particularly my favorite story is my father will tell us every time we go over the bridge, I've lived to see three bridges. <laughs> I'll say, that's nice. You know, I've lived to see three bridges. Yeah, next time over. You know, I li oh, yeah, you lived to three. But he tells a funny story. They were bringing my great-grandmother's clothing uh, to her and they spent some time with her and it was late at night and they were returning and dad used to claim that they were the last people going over the old wooden bridge the next morning or later in that night it had collapsed or had some significant damage so uh, he they have lived to see three bridges I've only lived to see two uh, but it is always a delight to come across the bridge and as I shared with Monsignor Gilbert when you walk into a parish you can see the love the people have for their parish, not only just in the beauty in which they keep their church in this sacred place so beautiful, but the ways in which you have responded. And I often say St. Mary's is a beautiful example of a church that has such a long and vibrant history in the Diocese of Greensburg and how you have evolved through the ages and continue to be extremely vibrant and dynamic. And I know there are many challenges today that face our parishes and our regions. Some are completely outside of our control, but some are very much in our control. And a place of welcoming, a place of home, a place that is true to the gospel and to the church's teachings is a place that will draw people and gather people. And I can tell by your stewardship of time, talent, and treasure that in the best sense of the word, you call this parish your home and you take wonderful responsibility for that. Not only I know supporting Monsignor now, but the priests who have gone before him. And in a beautiful and appropriate way, the work of the laity with your pastor and the priests form what we see here. So I wanna thank you personally from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done, all you continue to do for this beautiful parish and for allowing it to be a beautiful example of evangelization to our world today. Our, our Catholic faith is a rich faith. It is a beautiful faith. It is a treasure. And we cannot allow the world around us to define who we are or what we stand for or what we believe. We make that, as we did at the final part of our stations today, we make that profession of faith. We know what we believe. We cannot be embarrassed of that. We cannot shy back from that, but embrace that, proclaim that, live that, and demonstrate that. That's what I see and I know is happening here at St. Mary's. So thank you. Thank you so much. It, again, is a pleasure and a joy to be with you today and an honor, and I mean that sincerely. As many times as I've crossed the bridge, only seeing it, two bridges, uh, I could never believe that one day I would be here at St. Mary's as the Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. So it is a humbling honor but it feels like home. So thank you so much. And I do think that we have at this time too, a wonderful youth uh, from Mary Queen of Apostles uh, are here today. And I think they have a presentation and I'm so delighted. You know, I go back to that Mary Queen of Apostles when I came to St. Joseph's in New Kent in 2008, I was sent there by Bishop Bosco in 2002, excuse me, not 2008, that's when I left, <laughs> but in 2002, and one of the things Bishop Bosco said to me is he said, Father, he said, we've just combined the schools in New Kensington. I want them to not only survive, I want them to thrive. And it was an honor not only to be there five and a half years and watch the beginning years of that consolidated school, but what a joy it is for me to be here today as Bishop and to see what you have been able to accomplish and to see how over the years our school is continuing to grow and last year had a beautiful increase in enrollment so thank you all and i'm going to be very honored to i'm going to ask one senior thank you Monsignor. i oh boy i think this is the biggest card i've received so far <laughs> look at that isn't that beautiful <laughs> thank you for my children. And I, I'm going to tell you, when I go back today, uh, look at this, it's all signed from every, isn't that beautiful?
congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We pray that God gives you guidance as you lead our diocese. What a beautiful prayer and what a beautiful wish. And I, I need those prayers and I ask you for those prayers. And we have something. This is from first grade. Thank you so very much. Thanks to all of you. How do you like Miriam Kuyo? Great to have you with you. And please, please give Mrs. Collette, who I know very well, and uh, all of your teachers my best, okay? It's so great to see you. And thank you for representing the school. We also have uh, Kathleen here, who rep is representing St. Joseph High School. I don't know if I know, St. of course I know St. Joseph High School, being an alumnus of it. And so I'm very honored to also have representation from St. Joseph High School here today. Thank you. <clears throat> Catholic education is a very, very impart, important part of the church's ministry. And I know all of you know, it is an important ministry and it is one that we are highly, highly supportive of. And I personally am very supportive of. You know, we need to do everything we can in our culture, in our world today, to counter the secular gospel of the world. And it's all around us. We know that. And to have the opportunity to have our youth and our children immersed in what I think in some ways is one of the last components of a daily Catholic culture is a beautiful way in which we can continue to promote the faith and plant the seeds for the next generation. Not only the seeds that will fill our pews, but will stand behind our altars and in our religious life pray for us. So, Thank you again. Uh, I truly, sincerely mean it. It is an absolute honor to be here. And, and thank you. Uh, I often say, both as a pastor and emceeing for many years, I know what goes on behind the scenes to accomplish these things and all of the communication, all the preparation. And I'm very grateful of that and acknowledging that and realize that. So, so thank you very much. And be assured of my prayers for each and every one of you, for your family and all of your loved ones. Embrace this beautiful season of Lent. I often say it is the, the church's great time of retreat for all of us and allow this time to fill you with a spiritual renewal. And I know we're all coming so close to the fatigue of COVID, uh, but we offer that up, especially as we carry the crosses. Stay persistent, stay patient, stay diligent, and stay faithful. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>